Hello, everyone. Welcome to Cave of the Cross Apologetics. I'm Patrick. And I'm Tony. And uh, we're into uh, chapter two of our uh, new book, Why Should I Believe Christianity by uh, James Anderson. Yeah. And um, today we're uh, in chapter two, which is called The Big Picture. And so we're going to talk about uh, what we always like talking about, worldview. <laughs> yeah. Why is it important? What it is? All those are good things. So What is the big picture? Right? That's right. <laughs> Uh, so we start off with uh, with our um, author talking about if you consider some of the Christianity's distinctive key teachings individually in isolation from the whole, they can seem very hard to believe. Quite outlandish, in fact. Yeah, well, talking yeah. donkeys. Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, men rising from the dead more than once. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, uh, um, people doing uh, uh, they're in one place and then they're in the next place. Yeah. So. Teleportation, yeah. I guess, something like that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, feeding the 5,000, which when I was little, I was just thought Jesus was really good at division. Yeah. But it's really multiplication yeah, he's really good yeah, at. Yeah, really. So, uh, <laughs> so those are things. So, so instead of taking this uh, uh, viewpoint of individual ones, Christianity doesn't say, oh, you know, have this be a portion of your um, uh, uh, economic view or have this be only consider your morality view. No, no, it's everything impacts it. Right, if thing. you understand it, if you want to claim it's true, it's not just these little points of view. It's these big ones. So things like God made the universe out of nothing. God speaks to us today through a 2,000-year-old book. <laughs> God became a human being and died. Yeah. You know, outlandish things uh, through, through and through for, for um, today's standard, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> but here's the point I think he's trying to make here is that you can't properly evaluate Christianity by considering each of its teachings in isolation. Right, right, right. You have to put them together and examine Christianity as kind of an integrated whole. Right. right. So when you do that, you discover that Christianity locks itself together, he tells us, in a very tight way. Its various claims explain and support one another so that uh, they're tightly interwoven. Right. right. So consequently, so when each of its individual's teachings um, is understood in the light of the whole, he says... Given that perspective, then Christianity uh, makes excellent sense mm -hmm. when you put it when you look at the whole picture, right? Right, right. So it, things like the Trinity, right? If we talk about, oh well, Jesus claims he's God, but then monotheistic religion, uh, it doesn't make sense, right? Well, yeah, if, yeah. Is if, it a monotheistic if, right. religion or do, is it polytheism? Right. right? Do they have multiple gods? Kind of right. Thing, right? So yeah. again, if you take these things in isolation, if you only let James uh, speak within James and not the whole um, um, gamut of, of the writings of Christianity, then, yeah, uh, we could run into these contradictions, but it's only because, uh, you know, if, if you took a sentence like, um, uh, the, the Bible says that there, uh, there is no God. Well, okay, the fool says in his heart there is no God, but we just, we just wanted to focus on that one part. Yeah, yeah. So, you, you sometimes have to read. So if read we take a little, little bit, piece, yeah. and yeah, we well, can make that mean almost anything. Yeah, right. right yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and we wouldn't want that to happen to us today. And so that's what um, that's what uh, uh, we we want to encourage here. So uh, we're more than the sum of the parts, kind yeah. of deal. Yeah. So if you stand up close and look at an impressionist painting, it looks like a collection of rather careless random brush strokes, or you know your little dots. If you remember uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and then <laughs> you pull back, and it's like you know the the beach on the countryside or whatever what, what the, the famous painting is. You need to take a step back. Only when you view those brush strokes in the context of the whole picture, you can truly appreciate the the genius of the artist. Yeah. And those magic eye paintings, I still haven't been able to get them to work. And <laughs> no matter what you do, it, you know, go cross-eyed and hold it far away. So I'll, I'll just take people's word for it that it's a sailboat. <laughs> the whole is more than the sum of the individual parts. Right. And it's and more than just the, the brush strokes. Sure. It's right. the brush strokes that lead to the creation of the tree in the forest. Right, right. And so he says <laughs> the same is true, uh, you know, of Christianity. Uh, his point here is a simple one, but it's kind of often overlooked, mm -hmm. right? Uh, if we're going to uh, consider whether Christianity should be, believe, should be believed, whether Christianity is uh, true and reasonable, he tells us, then we need to judge it as a whole on its own terms and, and in its own context. Right. As uh, with so many things, Christianity is far more than the sum of its parts, right? Uh, people are like onions. Trolls are like onions, right? That's what Shrek taught us. <laughs> so uh, Christianity is a worldview. One way to appreciate this point is to recognize that Christianity is a worldview. It's, yeah. it's, it's more than just how you uh, live your life as far as it goes to your money or to your morality or 
how you treat your children or how you work in the family. Mm. It envelops everything that it's supposed to do. If Christianity is true, then how does it affect what I believe about outer space and inner space? Yeah. Type deal. Yeah. Yeah. So one way to appreciate this point of view is to recognize that Christianity is a worldview and therefore it needs to be evaluated as a worldview. Mm. But what exactly does this mean? Well, yeah, wh- what luckily, is a worldview? Yeah, luckily yeah. Our, our author knows this uh, subject well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he's going to give us a basic definition of a worldview, right? He says that as the words word itself suggests, a worldview is a comprehensive view of the world. Uh, and he's saying that here he doesn't mean physical, you know, the physical view of the world kind of thing, like, you know, the side of a plant, plant, uh, the planet Earth or something like that, right? If you go into outer space, look, there's the yeah. planet Earth. That's right? a view of the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not a worldview. Right, that's right. a view of the world, right? He says a worldview is a philosophical view of the world, right? Not just our planet, by the way, but the entire universe indeed all of reality. So bigger. Yeah. <laughs> Universe view. Yeah. <laughs> so our worldviews uh, represent our most fundamental beliefs and assumptions about the universe we inhabit. Right. So it's, it, you can kind of view it as like your glasses. Uh, I I had the super laser awesome thing that uh, removed my glasses, but Tony's got glasses. And right. so how he sees the world once he puts them on uh, is, is how he interacts with it and whether he knows things are clear or far, and so we can do that too. All right, exactly. They're no longer fuzzy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> they also uh, incorporate and express our deepest values, what we see as the highest good, what standards we use to judge between right and wrong, mm. what we value most in life and, and other people, and what pursuits we consider most worthy. So these are values, right? And our values really determine, you know, to a certain extent, you know, what how we feel about things and that sort mm-hmm. of thing, right? And so this is what uh, we and others in the presuppositional mindset say is important because everyone has them. Everyone views evidence and, and everything through them. And so it would be almost uh, uh, wrong for us to not consider how much that plays a part in, in people. You can, you can pepper them with uh, 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 video evidence of the resurrection occurring right before their eyes. But what, you know, what does that mean if, if they're, um, of the belief that miracles don't happen? Yeah. Yeah. That's not part of their world. Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. They have to dismiss it. They would right? have to. Yeah. Yeah. So in some, he tells us our worldviews reflect how we would answer the, you know, the big questions of, of human existence, right. the fundamental questions that we ask about, you know, life, the universe and everything else. He says, uh, questions like, is there a God? Uh, and if so, what is God like? And how do we relate to God? Those types of things, right? The, if there isn't a God, does, does that really matter? Right? That's a big fundamental question. Uh, what is truth? Can anyone really know what the truth is anyway? Mm-hmm. Those types of right. questions, right? But not everyone has considered all of these questions, let alone reflected deeply on them. People just kind of glob on. I, I think it was um, it was either Mitch Stokes's or Nancy Piercy's book when we were talking about how people obtain their worldviews. I think it was Nancy Piercy. She says sometimes it's the TV that you watch, the movies that you watch, mm-hmm. the books that you read, mm-hmm. uh, the the your parents, the people you hang around with, the, the your friends, uh, what they view as important. You might uh, pick, pick bits and pieces yeah, of it. And so yeah. sometimes we don't evaluate things as oh well, um, you know, uh, um, th- th- this part is is good. But if I were to to be um, in, in a different time and place from where I'm at right now, then I would consider this not good. Yeah. So we don't, we, we kind of hold these uh, uh, competing facts at different levels, at different standards. And we don't quite always realize that we're, we, we're uh, living the unexamined life at times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the answers you give to such questions, if you gave them uh, some honest and careful thought, will expose your underlying worldview. So mm-hmm. sometimes people don't, oh, I don't even have a worldview. I, I just kind of take take it for what it is. Well, you know, whatever's uh, presented in front of me is what I believe. Or, um, you know, if, if I can hold it, then I can touch it. Right. Uh, You know, if I I can touch it, I can believe it type, (laughs) type deal. Or they don't even think about these kinds of, you know, deep, we might say, you know, big picture questions. Right. 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 So the question he wants us to consider is, um, you know, why does uh, worldview matter? Right. Yeah. If, if no one really knows about it. Yeah. Wh- and, wh- and it's wh- kind of, you know, assumptions that we make and right. we really don't, sometimes we don't even examine these, mm-hmm. these questions. So what's the big deal? Right? That's the, that's why philosophers have jobs. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. uh, so he, he gives us an illustration. He says, have we ever watched a house being built after the ground has been cleared 
he tells us. And then the first parts of the house to be built are the foundation, right? And then the frame, mm -hmm. right? That's, that's the idea. So he says these parts are absolutely essential to the house, right? right? You got to have the foundation because it has to be, that has to be solid, has to stay upright, and the, and the, and the frame of the house. He says you can't have a house without these supporting structures. Mm -hmm. And he says worldviews are analogous in terms of our uh, thought lives, right? They provide the foundation and the frame uh, to the way that we think about the world. Right, right. right. And this is what we talked about with, with Nancy Piercy of, of evaluating the foundation and, and the sides. And then even with uh, Greg Hochul's book, we talked about um, people wanting to put the roof on before – uh, you know, they, they you put the walls, the walls up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Walls were reasons, I think. Right, yeah, the, right. Yeah. yeah. So the roofs were the big the big question that you were, that was being held up, right. if I yeah. remember right. So, yeah. so the roof is actually the floor in, uh, <laughs> if you don't have the sides. <laughs> um, our worldview reflects our most basic assumptions about what is real, what is possible, what is credible, what is reasonable, and what is good, and what is normal. Right, uh, so this is similar to the illustration you just gave. If you don't believe that miracles can happen and that they're credible, if your worldview doesn't allow for that, mm -hmm. then no matter what someone says, you are not going to hold, you know, you're not going to see that as, as a credible explanation, even if you see it. Right, right. right. Yeah. <laughs> yep. uh, you can tell that worldviews matter a great deal, though. And so he's going to give us the kind of three reasons why uh, they are important. Okay. So the first reason he says is, uh, he, well, he's already kind of mentioned this, mm -hmm. right? Worldviews are necessary for our thinking about the world, right? They provide the, the structure and stability of our thought lives. Yeah. We, right? we don't suddenly reset every day when we go to bed and we're like, oh, what, what is this place? Yeah. Where's, what's <laughs> DNA? What, what, what are my eyes? What, uh, senses? I don't understand this. <laughs> we're, we, we don't uh, kind of have this tabula rasa view. Uh, even though uh, people want to say that, oh, you know, uh, people come into the world as neither good nor bad. Uh, they come in this blank slate. Mm, yeah. right? That's not what it, yeah. uh, the world shows. Yeah. For instance, with ethics, uh, the scripture says that God's already written his law on our hearts, right? <laughs> so there's something there already. Yeah, and and so, you know, uh, pe people like to harp on, oh, uh, you know, presupposition is this, this uh, um, circular thing, but if the Bible is true, if Christianity is true, then th that's a, a precursor to our understanding of how people approach things. We can't start on this uh, even playing field where we, we shirk off all, uh, you know, uh, ideas of who God is or n not who God is. Uh, Christianity says everyone knows God, and so we have to operate based on that truth, or we don't really believe it. Right, right, yeah. Uh, so uh, the second part uh, uh, here to consider is that worldviews matter because they greatly shape the way that we think about the world, ourselves, our relationship with others. Right, that so seems they, pretty important. Yeah, so not only that we think, right, the right. structure and the foundation, <laughs> but the way we mm -hmm. think about the world, right, how we view the world, that sort of right. thing. Right, up, up, uh, up, around, through, you know, all, <laughs> all those things. Your worldview shapes and informs your experience of the world, like a pair of spectacles with colored lenses. It affects what you see, how you see it. Uh, right. you know. So what do you mean the world is, is red? That's just the way the world is. Right. Well, take off the red <laughs> spectacles, right? right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, I've been wearing sunglasses the entire time. It's a lot lighter in this room than what I, what I previously thought. Yeah. But I can't convince you that the world is lighter because you're viewing it through the, the sunglasses. Yeah. Yeah. You have to be able to realize that you can take them off or change them out. So not only the structure and the foundation and not only the way we view the world, right, the glasses idea. But thirdly, he says worldviews matter because our worldview affects how we evaluate a truth claim, mm -hmm. right, and how we interpret evidence for or against that particular truth claim, right? And so, you know, the idea of a truth claim here is, you know, a, um, a statement that you believe is true. And so, uh, you know, there's uh, at least one book in the room, right? Or several. <laughs> <laughs> that's wallpaper. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but my hand doesn't go through it, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> so he says there's no simple relationship between worldviews and evidence. You know, on the one hand, it's possible, he tells us, to evaluate worldviews on the basis of evidence. So we can evaluate worldviews. And we can uh, test our worldviews and the worldview of others, right? Right. On the other hand, though, uh, how we interpret evidence will largely depend on our worldview. 
So there's a complex, this, this two-way relationship mm. between worldviews and evidence. Right. You know, it's, it's not just one or the other, it's, it's both. Mm. And that means one can't refute another person's worldview by simply appealing to the evidence. Right. Well, uh, let's just look at the evidence. Yeah. Right? Uh, here's the clom. Here's uh, the minimal facts argument. Yeah. Oh, well, I know that men don't rise from the dead. Let's go to the morgue. Here, here's my evidence. Yeah. Well, okay, that's your evidence, and here's my evidence. So yeah. what do we do with that? Yeah. Hmm, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's more than just those two. Right. But he tells us that there can only be one, right? Or there can only be one. Yeah, right? A Highlander version. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so uh, he says it's tempting to think that it's merely a matter of personal choice what worldview we have, right? You have your worldview. I have my worldview. We choose it based on whatever, right? right? And perhaps it's just a matter perhaps based on our culture or maybe our upbringing or something like that. He says that we see the world through our worldview and you know you see the world through your worldview and and so there's no right or wrong it's kind of we might say relative to the individual the worldview mm -hmm. is relative to the individual right one person see this, sees it this way in terms of the way the world is another person sees it that way so worldview relativism we might say mm -hmm. right <laughs> Well, and that's not entirely wrong, right? So while it's true that our culture, upbringing, education do have significant influence on our worldview, mm -hmm. we need to recognize a very important point. The fact that our worldviews are influenced by these factors doesn't mean that all worldviews are equally good. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. So so even though our worldviews are influenced by the society that we're in, how we've been brought up, the people that we are around us, doesn't mean that everybody's worldview that's different is equal to everybody else in terms of equally good about how the world really is. Mm -hmm. right? right. And, and we, we see this in movies all the time. We see, uh, ones like, uh, with Kurt, uh, Kurt Russell soldier, uh, room, um, uh, uh, the pretender TV show, uh, this, this idea of, of secluding kids away, uh, and, and raising them up to be soldiers or, mm. or this uh, ability to, to use their talents to pretend to be anything. And then they escape and they see the outside world or that, you know, they, they break away from uh, what they know to, to outside. And so it's, it's not just, oh, well, you know, that works for them in that setting. It's no, there's a right way and a wrong way, even if you've been influenced greatly by right. those things like your culture. And right. Upbringing. So clearly all worldviews, you know, <coughs> can't be true especially if they contradict right right that, right yeah right uh, <clears throat> two plus two equals whatever number you want to put in there. that's right because that's what my worldview says yeah right mine says five right okay <laughs> sure <laughs> but that's not the good one not if you want to land the rocket on the moon <laughs> the fact that our worldviews are influenced by these factors doesn't mean that they're equally good but one worldview can be more true than another worldview and in the sense it better represents reality right so what he's trying to do here is to try to help us to get to how we evaluate world. Right. right. So if they're different and they're not equally good, then we have a basis of evaluation, right? Because mm -hmm. we have to, we have to say, what do we mean by good? And, and there is a standard. Right. 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 So, so uh, you and I can be throwing the baseball back and forth together, but if all of a sudden it, you want to become a Hindu that believes that all life is, you know, an illusion, and when that ball's traveling at you, you can say, oh, well, there's an illusion of a ball traveling at me right. until it hits you in the face. <laughs> and you're like, oh, well, I didn't have to put up my hand, right. but now I'm suddenly faced with reality. Yeah, there's an illusion there, of there's pain. A there's an illusion of yeah. blood. There's an illusion of <laughs> there, There's a conflict here, <laughs> yeah. and, and I need an explanation for it. And so, uh, you know, you have people like Planiga that talks about, you know, having defeaters and uh, a baseball to the face might be a, bi a big enough defeater, defeater to get over yeah, that, that, yeah. Uh, that idea. Yeah. So again, different worldviews make conflicting claims, right? And assumptions. And so they can't all be equally true. Right. 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 Uh, some worldviews are truer, he says, than other worldviews. And in principle, there must be one worldview that is what he calls the most true. Right? <laughs> <laughs> a worldview that reflects the way things really are better than any other worldview. Mm -hmm. And so the all-important question is, uh, which one is that, right? Which one of the worldviews is the, the most true? Right, right, right. And so that's what we want to do. We, we want to talk about how Christianity could be the, the, the overarching, the, the best true worldview as opposed to materialism, uh, you know, whatever else is out there, uh, illusionary, uh, pantheism, all that stuff. So um, 
We're going to uh, uh, then get into how do we evaluate uh, worldview. Mm. Mm. Uh, so, uh, so for the next episode, then uh, we're going to get into how how does one evaluate a worldview, and so um, we'll we'll break up this chapter here and uh, pick back up with how we evaluate those worldviews and see which ones uh, are the better ones. It's Christianity, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so, thanks Sneaky. for joining us. Uh, thanks for the, uh, those that uh, support us on Patreon. Uh, we appreciate it, and um, uh, thanks for uh, continuing to uh, watch, read, like, uh, pick up these books, uh, learn more. That uh, uh, faith isn't uh, a blind leap into the dark, but uh, one that uh, uh, our trust is based on um, the God of all truth. So mm. thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you next time. We'll see you next time.